J.T. Crowley is Talking Books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. Hello, everybody. I'm J.T. Crowley, and today I have the great pleasure of talking to Polina Mladenova about her book, Kings and Queens in Slavery. Polina sees herself as an ambitious business person, mother, author, whose aim is to capacitate what she deems as kingdom leaders through cultivating vital announcements stemming from the word of God, so that the inner workings of God's kingdom flourishes in everyday life, be that personal or business, all to ensure God's original plan is followed through. She's a born-again Christian. She was born in Bulgaria, but now sees herself as a British Bulgarian. She believes in God's full promises, blessings, and that God has made a plan, a promise, for her to fulfill a prosperous life in all its forms. Polina is the founder of Clavina Beauty and Couture House, the Abundant Life Foundation Ministry, plus Kings and Queens Living the Abundant Life TV show. Polina teaches business strategies, modules, and kingdom mindset for budding entrepreneurs, all through biblical adaptions that allow prosperous and fruitful businesses to thrive with God's original plan at the heart of the business module. She has three children and presently lives in London. Quite an impressive CV, you might say. So let's invite Polina onto the show to talk about all of this. Polina. Come and join me. Hello, John. Thank you very much for inviting me in your beautiful show. It's my pleasure to be with you today. You're very welcome. Polina, you seem to have your finger in a lot of pies, so to speak. So why did you feel compelled to write this book? And why the title, Kings and Queens, with a reference to, to slavery? I have to say, I'm a little bemused to the title of the book, having read it. Was this simply uh, you tying this up with the TV show? So why the book title? Why the book? Uh, first of all, it was a revelation that I recorded, and then these recordings I edited as a book. My, my first goal wasn't actually to create a book or maybe it was but kind of came, came flow to that. Uh, Kings and Queens, it's a revelation that comes from God himself. He called us a royalty nation. He called us masterpiece. He called us as his children, a holy nation, a priest, you know? So it came to uh, this revelation, who I am in Christ, or who we are as well as the children of God, it came when I was to uh, when I was in very down place in my life. When I say very down place, I mean by um, my circumstances wasn't where I should be. So. Uh, I'm born again 20 years ago. When I say born again, I'm baptized. I know the word of God. Um, and uh, I, I know the laws. I, I know everything, you know, uh, almost. But then I realized that I wasn't living this abundant, prosperous life that the word of God promises, that Jesus said, I came here to give you abundant life. And, and more, I was, feeling, I was feeling very alone. I was feeling very, very down. I was living in a place where it, it wasn't on God's standards, if you understand what I'm saying. I do. I do. Um, so so I, I, I was I, I born again in, in Houston, and I said, I made a promise actually to God and I said, listen, I, I just want to live this abundant life yeah, that you promised to have and just tell me what I have to do, uh, open my eyes, open my heart and guide me and tell me secrets. Why, why is this? Why I'm not living this? And Houston is a big church. It's a mega church. And even in mega churches, you, you see 
people that live a normal life. And I was thinking to myself, if you, if you have God Almighty that can do everything, that can get you to any level of success, of happiness, of health, of mm. love, of, of all areas, yeah? I'm not I saying agree. in one area. I'm yeah. saying in all areas. So oh. why we are not living this? <laughs> now, your book isn't an easy read, is it? It's mm. a book that you can't sit back on the sofa, curled up on the settee. Um, it's not a book to put a bedtime read, you know, a light book. This is a book you have to concentrate and reflect on the messages and the strong message that you are trying to get across to people, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. a novel fiction. It's a book to eye-open people's readers' mindset, isn't it? Correct, John. So um, the book is not about a story. The book is about revelation. A revelation from the word of God himself. I was, uh, by the way, I was fasting. So uh, in my mornings when I was fasting, I was reading the word of God. And this is literally the revelation that I got on, on that fasting. Sometimes even now when I read is so strong when I'm busy at work and when, I, uh, when I'm in my business and my office, when I open the word of God, I'm like, when I opened this book, I'm literally, I can't believe, this is definitely not my words. This is words from God himself. But, I mean, I use deeply, when, when, when I check the word, the word of God in each, um, um, each verse, I go to each translation, and then after that, I study that word in Greek. I have a big Bible that is... Um, that is because let's say we understand in english but in greek it meant different things it does it does yes yeah. so, so, would you, so would you, yeah would you explain uh polina to the listeners and the viewers what your interpretation of kingdom mindset is because this is at the no, no, the crux of your book is kingdom mindset for me it means yeah. as followers of christ we are to have kingdom mindset to say god is in charge we're not, and that God is perfectly entitled to do with us as he pleases. And our role on this earth is to bring about the advancement of the Gospels and his kingdom with the abilities he gave us. Now, I think, as I said, this is at the none of your book, the heart of your book. So I'm interested to see if my version of kingdom mindset is totally different to yours. What's your version here? What does kingdom mindset mean to you? Um... First of all, when you said that God is in charge, I came across about this thinking a lot of in, a, in, a, in the church. I've been speaking, basically when I published the book, it, it, it was so many thoughts and revelations that people have the wrong thinking about God. Because some they say, oh, if God allow, right? Because People think like that. Oh, if God allow, I will do this. If God allow, DVD. So you need to understand that in Genesis 1, 26, he said, I give them dominion. So he give us dominion to rule over the nations, to rule. He give us a will. If this will, it's line up with the word of God, that's another thing. But, but he put basically the authority on us. So he put us in charge. Uh, he put us in charge to, to impact the industry where we are or, or, or to impact people or to impact nations or to bless nations through our gifts. Uh, so, so it's no God is going to do it. He sent us to do it. So we have to do what he tell us to do. Kingdom mindset is mostly like um, applying a kingdom principles, kingdom laws in our daily life. I get that, and I thought that, and, thought, and <laughs> now I can see why you've done the, set the book out as you've set it. Um, you, you've subdivided the book into four parts. 
Uh, part one is called Blessing in Your Life, Family and Business. Part two is Speaking Like King and Queen. Uh, part three, Kingdom Laws for Exceedingly Abundantly Life. And you've just touched on that, Kingdom Laws. And part four, very briefly, Kings and Queens Daily Choices. What's the significance in grouping aspects of your book in this fashion? Do you think this helps the reader to understand your thought process, your approach to the way that you conduct your life in particular? I would say um, there is a, some misunderstanding about the blessing, what it is you know, and some of those it's, um, some of those it's, um, it's actually part of God's covenants, yeah, so the blessing is basically the covenant of God, and that's why I touch on so many, um, like as an introduction, you know, because many people says, some people says, oh, I'm blessed, I'm this, but but actually on a daily vocabulary, they say, oh, I'm fine, or not too bad. You know, here in the UK, we have yeah. this day, ah, oh, not too bad. Yeah, so, we all say that, yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so the revelation that I got from uh, Isaiah 65 is basically God is saying, you need to bless yourself. Uh, but what is it the blessing look to you? The blessing to you don't look like the same blessing as me, you know? Uh, the blessing itself, number one, it's a covenant. So God promised to protect us, to love us, to prosper us and whatever we're doing. But we also, we have a part of this covenant. It's like a marriage. It's, it's two ways, you know? What you give, you receive. It's not just he doing his part. Uh, okay. But also, it's part of, of a kingdom laws and principles. Uh, I'm coming on to them. Uh, yes. So, let's look at part one. Um, this, to me, seems to be centered around blessings, which you've, you've already you know, mentioned. Morning blessings, living blessings, laws and hidden wealth blessings. I get the impression that this section is you pointing out to people that they should use the blessings, talents God has given them, and the gains, be they personal or business, should be given back to God for him to use accordingly to his own original plans. Am I right in what I've just said? Does that yes. make that section? <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 John. Uh, what it is is like, the reason why I focus so much on the blessing is but because um, uh, in my life, for maybe I wrote the book what a few years ago. So when I when I born again, I was maybe 30, 35 or thirty six. So all these years, I haven't been blessed by my family. So my mom didn't spoke a blessings over me. My ex husband didn't spoke blessings over me my do you understand what i'm saying I so i didn't experience the blessings of that in my life so i'm like what's going on just tell me why i'm not living it and then i realized that kings and queens they speak with their mouth so i had to release the blessing with my mouth and and because of that I start having the habit when I wake up with my coffee to literally speak blessing over my day, over my business, over my kids. So just release what I want to happen. And I understood that that's the way God made us. And years ago, I literally opened the word blessing and I studied it for years. I read every single one verse where it says blessing i'm like tell me what does that mean you know and and it's such a beautiful such a oh that, that that's the way he made us prosperous because he said i bless them and they multiply i bless them and they become a company of nations i bless them and they expand so the blessing 
is the one that produces blessings, material things. It's not actually, the blessing is not the car, the house. Okay. You, you, you know? I do. I get it. Yeah. Um, what, what a normal person would think. <laughs> <laughs> I want to move on here. I want to go to yeah. point two. This is speaking like king and queen, and you've already touched on this. Why was this section so important to you that you devote three chapters on this umbrella? If I just knew the way God made me when I was young, I wouldn't make a mistakes that I have made. And it's the way that I'm teaching my kids and they might don't have the full understanding, but when they see that things happen, when I say with faith, when my heart, my mind and my, my, my speech agree with the word of God, they see it happen and they're like, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, wouldn't we all like to think, you know, when we look at things, we think, oh, we could have done that better back in life. And we go, why didn't we do it? But we just didn't. So, because you didn't say, everything that you see in your life right now is a result of what you say, what you, what you, when you, what you say with your words or maybe somebody else spoken to you with words. Hmm. So words are things. But words have to be heartfelt because words yes. can be just blank. No. You need to have yes. meaning behind them. Yes, yes. I'm glad we agree there. Um, yes. Let's go to the next section, you know, part three. And this is the, you know, you devote a fair section of your book to this uh, part, you know, uh, to kingdom laws for exceedingly abundantly life. We see a lot of discussion in this section around fruitfulness, sowing, reaping, multiplying. And you've got five chapters dedicated to this area. So this is a, was this deliberate? Is this so important that you put a huge chunk of your book to this section? And I loved it when you talk about the parable of the, um, and we all know this, of the, um, the sower, when he puts the sowed out, some fell on the roadside, some fell amongst the thorns, and some fell onto the rich soil. You know, it was a wonderful parable that Jesus used to explain to the disciples and the followers that were listening to him at that time. This is an important section of your book, isn't it? It's, uh, it's another revelation of the kingdom laws that I discovered by myself. So basically, if you, if you have a need, you need to sow a seed. I agree. So, sowing a financial seed, sowing a time seed, sowing a, any kind of seed, giving, I'm talking about giving right now, uh, attitude and, um, and attitude and also a habit of giving. So, when, when, when I wrote the book, I was in, in a no good financial position. Uh, I'm a lone mom with three kids. I was living on a, on a very small amount weekly. And I just didn't have money for my business. It, it, it was basically everything going on my living. And I'm like, that's no it. I, I'm going to apply this law and it has to happen. So every, like a clock, every single week, I was investing and putting a seed and the word of God in the place where I was spiritually fed. And I say, this seed is for this. I decree and declare that it's going to multiply by hundreds, by thousands, because you, Father God, you said that that's true. And I'm expecting my seed to come back to me. I'm not just, okay, I'm giving. No, no, no. I'm giving, but I'm expecting uh, the result of that seed. L let's say you, you sow, you're sowing something. You're not going to go, okay, wherever. You're going to come back in, in, and expect the harvest to come, right? So, so it's exactly how it happens. Um, and is it working? Very well. Oh, very well. and that's why she's got so many business assets, everybody. So perhaps we need to read her book a little bit more. 
Um, true, true, John. Very, very true. Oh, no, yeah. Now, uh, you, you sneak in here. You sneak in here. <laughs> part four. Why did you find it necessary to put part four where you did towards the end? You're talking about covenant blessings versus curses. Penalty of disobedience. Hmm. Because many of us are living, I know curses is very strong word, but there are many things we should not allow. Because if Jesus died on the cross for us, that means that we should not be living any kind of struggle, any kind of mental struggle. In a sense like, oh, what am I gonna do now? Where am I gonna get the normal money? How am I gonna do it? I don't know. Corona. Oh my God. You understand what I'm saying? So we should not be living like that because we should be living in peace and love and kindness. That's the matter what happened in the world. And I'm seeing even young generation are stressed. I'm like, what are you stressed of? Why are you stressed? So do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, so you should not allow curses because you're living already the blessed life. So in order for you to see, to see what are the blessings, it's good you to see the curses. Uh -huh. So that you kind of compare the black and white, no? So that's why you put it in uh, the, the last part of the book. Uh -huh. To be honest, in Deuteronomy 28, he says, blessings of obedience, and straight away there is a blessing of disobedience. He said, like a three times or four times if you if you disobey me it will happen this if you disobey me again it will happen this if you disobey me again i will put seven times more curses on you and i will curse your generation so do you understand what i'm saying he's literally putting a but black and white three, it's your choice but three has a significant meaning in the bible peter denied christ Three times <laughs> before yes, the cock yes. crew. There you go. Paulina, um, out of your book, you back up your concepts, your ideas, by referencing to several uh, Bible edition readings. Um, the new international version, the NIB, which is based on a modern translation using the earliest, highest quality manuscripts available, you uh, use the New Living Translation Bible, the NLT, which relies on critical editions of the original Hebrew and Greek texts. Occasionally you refer to the King James Bible, and occasionally you refer to the ESV, the English Standard Version. Why those? And not others like the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. I'm curious. You tend to go for the newer versions, not the old versions. Why? To be honest, um, the all the versions are, I guess, are, are, they're th the same translations, but in different way saying it. Uh, what I tend to do when I study is like I have an app where they have maybe like a ten or fifteen different translations. So me to understand what God is trying to tell me through one verse, I go through all of them, and then where I get better understanding. The NLT is, of course, better, and the NIV uh, as well. Uh, but let's say if I want to study one specific word, so let's say if God says, um, uh, when Isaac planted his crop that same year, he harvests a hundred times more than he planted, and then he become very rich, and his wealth continue to grow more and more um, continuously. So some translation says continuously, meaning isn't my wealth and money grow continuously? I have to ask myself that question, and that's the level of blessing I should get. I know that many Christians, they are okay with salary. Many of Christians are okay with certain but, but that's not certainly what, what says about the blessing. So then what I do is like I go and the word blessing and I go in my Bible, which is the original of Hebrew. There is one 
study Bible that says Hebrew and Greek, and it goes deep, maybe one page, just explaining what is the word Barak, which is the blessing. And then it shows in so many hundred another verses the same word. Mm. And then you see, wow, I have to become, I have to have this experience of blessing. It just I, opens your mind, opens yeah, I, your I, eyes. I understand that because I, you know, a lot of born again Christians, they do tend to read the more up to date um, translations than the older mm. versions. So I thought that, but I thought I was going to ask you that. Um, the pictures, I have to say, the pictures are stunning. You know, the, the pictures that head up the various sections are, you know, they're vivid, they're bright, they're well chosen, and they're well meaning. Um, did you choose them or did someone else choose them? Does somebody else have an impact here? Or is this all your work, these beautiful pictures that head up the summary the chapters? The pictures are not in the printed version. The pre pictures are only in the PDF version. But Oh, sorry um, about that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you should put them in. But, but, but still, the PDF version, you can get it in the link, which is on the link that you put in the bio. And there is also a code that they can get it for free, the PDF version, not, not, the, uh, not the book. And yes, I did choose it myself because it's a revelation, like an illustration, how just expresses yeah. what God showed me. Which one did you like most? Um, I liked the one which had got, it was blue, it was in the sea, and it's got the treasure chest in it. This is my favorite verse. This <laughs> is my favorite verse. See, she was just testing me, everybody, to see it actually look at the book. Oh, I did. It's, it's, my, it's my favorite verse because God promises, promises treasure, heaven, and the darkness. That means that our blessings for you that nobody else knows where they are, but God, the Holy Spirit, will guide you to it. Will guide you to that business. Absolutely. Will guide yeah. you to that idea. Will guide you to the right person. So who do you see as your market for this book? But more importantly, Paulina, who would you like your market to be? Women? Men? Both? Who? Um, I was thinking that uh, the book was for believers, but then when I publish it, everybody start like, I think mostly no full, fully believers read the book until now. In a sense like, and, and they already said, wow, I'm, I'm not, e even, <laughs> Even one of my, my friends before she said, you changed my life, I'm gonna leave my job. She was, she was working two jobs. They treat her bad, they didn't even want to pay her salary. I'm like, listen, God give you a gift. She worked with me and makeup and, and I'm like, God give you a gift, you should use it uh, and focus on that and you should value it. And this, and this is your treasure. This, this is how God give you, you to bless people. And, she literally transformed her life upside down just by reading the book. So it's really for, um, this, this, this book would be quite a challenge for non-believers. Um, so it's really for believers, uh, you know, of all faiths. Yes. No matter what their gender, personality, or, you know, position in life is. Am I fair? Holy Spirit. I believe I that the Holy Spirit will open their minds and their hearts to, uh, to reveal what God wants them to, you know? To okay. So what's next for Polina Maladanova? Another book or something else? <laughs> I'm doing right now a tour. I'm doing a book tour. It's called Kings and Queens Experience. A revelation of your royalty. Uh, I'm organizing it to do it in Europe and very soon far away. Uh, so I'm going to talk everything about the book, 
plus I'm going to teach about kingdom entrepreneurs. So the whole Bible, it's a business plan. If you have not seen that way, <laughs> I don't know what you have been reading. <laughs> The is Bible is a, this is about a business plan, you know, but with a biblical background and with the Christian um, traits, followings, uh, ways of life. That is what this book is really about, everybody. Paulina, Magdalena, thank you so much for coming on my show. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you so book. much, John. It was my pleasure to, to be in your show. and. Thank you very much for your time. There you go, everybody. That's Polina Maladanova. I have to say, I found the book intriguing, thoughtful, a book that makes you stop and think. And perhaps for those readers who like to follow through with their own research by checking out the biblical cross-references, this book will certainly um, keep you occupied for a while, because it did me. People who are non-believers, you just might find this book a little challenging. Uh, but all I say is, give it a go. You never know. So it just leaves me to say, as I say at the end of all of my shows, I'm JT Crowley. Thanks for listening, watching wherever you are in the world. So until next time, stay safe.